Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, again for helping me and enabling me and putting me into the ministry of grace and truth. In this hour we live in, Lord, because truth is being cast down to the ground as we will get to here as we are going to talk again about the whirlwind. Remember now, this is in Proverbs. As I'll get to the one in Proverbs chapter 1, but Proverbs chapter 10 says, As the whirlwind passes, passeth, so is the wicked no more. And I remember this was after Ralph died. Uh, there's his gravestone. The handwriting of Dennis Larry written all over that tables of stone there. R.G. Stair born, May the 3rd, 1933. But he, 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 why did it say uh, died April the 3rd, 2021? And then you got the... Uh, Another example of Rose, the whore that brought Ralph to that piece of bread that put him in the ground there. I shall return. What about Jesus? I thought he was the most profound preacher in the world. The greatest preacher that ever lived. To speak about the coming of Jesus Christ, not the return of Ralph. But that's Dennis Larry's hand of perversion right there, brothers and sisters. That's how perverted this overcoming ministry is. And remember now, there's the leader and his whore wife. She, he got married to her. Of the overcomer ministry right there. You talk about perversion, people? That's all right. They're, they're going to have their end. In God's timing, they will be in the same lake of fire that Ralph's going to be put in. As a whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. And one day... This is a little bit, a few weeks after Ralph died. God killed him on April the 3rd, 2021. I heard, I was out in the garden here, and I heard the scripture. I was like, wow, as the world went past, so was the wicked no more. And I looked up on April the 3rd, and it was a day that whirlwinds, they call them tornadoes, that whirlwinds were profoundly manifested throughout the nation. Several hundred in just one day. And that's just the Lord impressing upon my heart that that's what happened with Ralph. He was killed on the same day when the whirlwind passed and the wicked are no more. God was witnessing to my heart that Ralph and his wickedness ceased to exist after April the 3rd, 2021, as far as his personage and his being alive, even though they present the wickedness of Ralph Stare and continue to do so on radio, it's in God's hands also. But you see, Ralph was no more after April the 3rd, 2021. Just as he continues to be no more, as Dennis Larry put out the surprise feast of trumpets this year. I wonder what kind of lies they're going to come up with now. The group of the Cemetery Club over there in Kennedy, South Carolina, how they all probably gathered around that, gathered right around that little stone there just a week or so ago. They probably still are embracing it. That's all right. As the wind whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And remember one thing, brothers and sisters, the foundation of the Lord stands sure. He knows them that are his, and he knows them that are nothing but given lip service and lies and perversion to who Jesus the Christ really is. Because if you ever met Jesus the Christ and had the born again experience, your life is going to change completely from one end to the other. God don't make mistakes. God don't make any kind of error. When he comes into your heart and life through his spirit, the spirit of Christ, you are going to manifest a whole new creature and creation that God is creating in you. Now, look at Proverbs chapter 1. This is what caught my attention the other day when I was listening to this scripture. I thought, wow, this is a good place to start with Milton. How about Helene and all the named storms that this perverted generation called science so costly 
called, falsely called, puts on, it's just like the, uh, they call the uh, water out here around the nations, like the uh, continents they call them, oceans, when God called them the seas. I remember that when I was a little boy growing up, the, the, uh, the what was it called, the seven seas of Sinbad, the sailor, Sinbad, he said, Sinbad, the sailor. Well, anyways, let's get back to Proverbs chapter 1. Because I have called, and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. This is the time we live in. God's shutting it down. I, don't, I, I really don't believe it. If God can save anybody anytime to put them in the body of Christ, that he has, his foundation stands sure. And he knows them that are his. But I believe he's shutting it down. This is no time to cast your pearl to the swine or give that which is holy that you have by the word of God to a dog. But you have said it not all my counsel and would not one, not one of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock you when your fear comes. You don't think God's mocking these people when their fear came with these storms? Florida is probably, next to California, Florida and California are the two most wicked places on the face of the earth as far as where people live, to live. They're ungodly, filthy habitations of devils, Two, them two states, for sure, California and, and uh, Florida, people are like the Gadareans. Just like the Gadareans. Hardly any clothes, all kinds of perversion, sin, iniquity, lust, being fomented, proclaimed, lived, Exhibited upon the face of the earth, like I said, Florida and California. And I remember the saying years ago, as California goes, so goes the nation. And that's because what was out, what's out in California? Hollywood, all kinds of Silicon Valley and uh, all, just all kinds of things that people have gravitated to live out there. And same thing in Florida. One of Donald Trump, Trump's famous pl favorite places to go, Mar-a-Lago. You know, Donald Trump's not a Christian either, even though this generation, I anybody that says that they're a Christian, uh, people say, oh, he's a Christian now, and then they go to the Bible. Oh, Trump's like Cyrus. No, Trump's like Satan. He is filled with the Power of darkness. Just like Jesus said, if that light that's in you be darkness, how great is it? And that's what we'll get to the darkness of these people that claim to know Jesus. But look at it, what it says in verse 27 of verse of, of Proverbs chapter 1. When your fear comes as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind like Milton, Helene, the two most recent ones, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, what does God say? This is Almighty God talking here. Then, then, shall they call upon me, but I will not answer? They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me? What? You tell me that nobody's going to find God after these tremendous storms went through the area? Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. Get out of Florida. Get out of California, far as if you've been a boarding experience, God would have led you out of there. Or else he would have grabbed you by the nap of your neck like he did with Lot and, and pulled him out. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. 
Wow. That's a finality of the word of God in this time we live in, people. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Remember now, God made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions or devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You tell me the prosperity of fools is not destroyed, has not, and continues to destroy the people of this world? Prosperity of fools, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The fool has said, No, there's no God, no God. Or they make up their own little God, as we'll get to. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You don't think the prosperity of these fools that play football and say that they're living for Jesus? Or uh, actors, actresses, any of this group of people, their prosperity of these fools are destroying people. What do you think people actually play sports when they see these sports stars being paid millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars? What do you think their dreams and goals are? Oh, they want to be just like them now, that they can achieve greatness. In any of these sports, they can gain the prosperity of a fool. But God finally answers it in verse 33 of Proverbs chapter 1. But whosoever hearketh unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Because evil has fear. There's no doubt about it. Have you ever committed any evil acts? It'll produce fear of people, especially if you've had a born-again experience. Period. Even though God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Sin brings torment, no matter what. It's still the, sin is still the sting of death. And anybody that has it, the sting of death, you're going to have to get rid of that sting, especially if you're in Jesus Christ. So you can die the death of the righteous as David cried for. Let me die the death of the righteous. No, actually that was Balaam. And he didn't die the death of the righteous, actually. Balaam died the death of the wicked. The heir of Balaam now. I remember Dennis Laird, we said that Ralph Stare. I remember this one day. Sitting there in a group of people there in the dining hall, and, and Ralph popped off. Oh, Dennis said that I was like Balaam. And it's a good thing. Balaam it was a good thing to be like Balaam. That's what Dennis told Ralph. Well, that's because Ralph was under the influence of the personification and presence of Satan himself being manifest. And it, 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 it wasn't long before God opened up the eyes of those that had, had eyes to see and ears to hear, and a heart to perceive what was really going on behind the scenes or the man behind the curtain of the Overcomer Ministry. And so I thank God that he had me and my wife depart from that perversion in 2000, the end of 2015. And then when we left, I'm going to tell you, when we left, an explosion, like an atomic bomb of spiritual perversion and wickedness was seen and manifested throughout that whole farm by Ralph Stair. As I don't need to go through memory lane of that perversion, because in 2016 was the 16-year-old uh, girl being molested by Ralph right in the radio room where the Word of God was being proclaimed throughout the world now. You talk about Somebody under a strong delusion, then people are still under a strong delusion at the Overcomer Ministry. But let's look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 24. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. As a whirlwind shall take, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. We're going to see the Overcomer Ministry eventually being taken away as stubble, like a whirlwind. The same whirlwind that killed Ralph Stair on April the 3rd, 2021. The same kind of whirlwind that went through Florida here recently with Milton and Helene, as they named them. 
Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. Not Mother Nature. Behold, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 19, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, and it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Remember now, God don't destroy the righteous with the wicked. So anybody that died in this, these storms, they're wicked. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Jeremiah 25 now, 30, verse 32. Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Where do you think uh, these whirlwinds come from? The coast of the earth. God's word don't change, brothers and sisters. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with a fury again, a continuing whirlwind, and it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Wow. That's why our cry for the minister to weep between the porch and the altar to spare thy people that these heathen ways and lifestyle and the heathen don't rule over us. Where the heathen would say to us, hey, where's your God? Ah, our God is in the heavens, people. That's our answer. Our God is in the heavens. And he does whatsoever pleases him. Just like he does with these whirlwinds. Not Mother Nature. The Lord is slow to anger. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. Great in power. And will not acquit the wicked. He's not going to acquit them. Like you see these uh, court cases. They, they acquitted them. They're acquitted. God will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the what? storm in the clouds are the dust of his feet just like we see the uh chemical trails out here which have been going on for many years many years they've been putting out chemicals in the air that's the clouds of satan's feet going to and fro just like god said to satan at one time he said hey i've been going to and fro throughout the earth yeah and Jesus is doing the same thing. Clouds are the dust of his feet. Remember now, our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 21. And we'll see an example of that right here. The days of Lot. Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared unto him, unto Abraham, in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Then you go to verse 16, And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, after they had a communing with Abraham. And Abraham went with them to bring them on their way. And the Lord said, So I hide from Abraham that thing which I do. Now, isn't that amazing? Because he's talking right here in the presence of Abraham. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him because of the seed of Christ. That's how all the nations of the world were blessed in Abraham. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous, Abraham, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And Abraham knew what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's no doubt. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now the angels had to do what they were going to do. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? It's going to be the same thing at the end of time here, at the end of this time. When God starts pouring out a judgment of fire, there ain't going to be one righteous person destroyed with the wicked. Period. Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy not, spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. 
and the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That's the same example with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the flaming, fiery furnace. They weren't destroyed, but yet the ungodly, wicked people that threw them in there were actually destroyed by the same fire that they were thrown into. Another example of God not destroying the righteous with the wicked. Shall not the God judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all this place for their sakes. And it, we know how it went down the line in verse 32. It says, Oh, let me let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak this once. Perhaps for adventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake, Abraham. And the Lord went his way. And as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, Abraham what? Returned unto his place. And then that brought me about with the scripture in Ecclesiastes. How if the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for in yielding pacifieth great offenses. Abraham went to his return to his place, pacifying the great offense that he was presenting to God about God destroying the righteous with the wicked, because there's no way he was going to do it. And he got it through to Abraham because Abraham returned to his place. And and for yielding pacifieth great offenses. What a profound scripture. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12. That's the finality of this age and generation we live in. God said he wasn't going to destroy and kill all mankind with water again like he did in the days of Noah. But he is going to pinpoint destruction and his wrath in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all them that know not God and obey not the gospel. He's coming with all his mighty angels in flaming fire. Wow. And the man said in Genesis chapter 19, verse 12, said on a lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law, sons, daughters, whosoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? For we, these are the angels now, who present themselves as men, but they didn't have bodies like we do to reproduce like that perversion that's been going on for years. How uh, the devil had had interactions with women in the days of Noah and produced giants. What a, whatever. You go, hey, you're under a delusion. God gave it to you to believe a lie that you all might be damned who love not the truth but had pleasure in the unrighteousness of lies. For we would destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Wow. That's a profound scripture right there. The sun was risen up upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. After Lot was taken out of there. And then you look in Luke chapter 17, verse 29. Jesus said, but the same day that Lot went out, of Sodom and rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. And then what it says here, verse 25 of Luke 17. And he overthrew the cities, or no, is this, uh, no, this is Genesis. And he overthrew the cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the cities. And that which grew upon the ground. Wow. Our God is a consuming fire. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Psalm chapter 104. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Spirits cannot produce Children with women, demonic spirits or angelic spirits of the holy angels. The Holy Ghost is not an angel. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and she was with child. 
But the Holy Ghost is not an angel. It's the Spirit of God. Manifestation in the presence of the Son of God. Who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So how about Psalm 105, verse 32? He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. And he did that several times. He did that in the days of uh, with Moses. He did that in the days of Lot. And he's going to do it in finality right before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 29, how about this one? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, saying, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus even said, don't go after them. They're liars. Because we'll get to a host of them here in just a little bit. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You tell me that all things are continuing as they were for me? No. There is nothing that's continuing as it was from the beginning of the creation. God's allowed men to produce storms like they've been doing because that's his handiwork of his judgment upon people. He's allowing men to produce weapons of war that are going to bring about God's judgment of fire, nuclear fire, the fire that Jesus is coming back in, nuclear fire doesn't even compare to it. Period. Just the light that's shown around Paul. The noonday sun, brighter than the noonday sun, blinded Paul's eyes for a season. God had to put scales over him. And then he removed the scales later, but still. For they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, days of Noah, being overflowed with water, perished. Hey, you suppose all those people were wicked sinners? Except you repent, you shall likewise perish in these judgments of God, who is the only one that kills and makes alive. Period. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, kept in store. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, not the righteous. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation in them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When do we rest? When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll get to these so-called born-again Christians now who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in the saints and to be admired in all them that believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. And we're in that day where this testimony that Paul wrote about and spoke about is believed in this day. Just like Brother Chris Gingrich. It shall be said in that day. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Is that scripture, that one right there, is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like it's it said in the, uh, uh, in the, in the, when Jesus talked about, when Je uh, in the ministry of Jesus Christ, when he said, and Jesus returned, when Jesus returned, the people all gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. Just like God gave Chris that scripture. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 6. Whereby the world then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens which and the earth which are now by the same were kept in store reserved unto fire 
against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which what? The heavens shall pass away with a great noise. I believe that's talking about new heaven and new earth, people. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That's how we're to present ourselves. Present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. In conversation and godliness. Not the way this world presents their Jesus. Now they're talking, they're, the world presents another Jesus compared to the true saints of God. And I'm speaking to and ministering to in his hour. Second Peter chapter 3. Looking forward, hastening on to the coming of what? The day of God. Where the heavens being on fire, heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a what? Fervent heat. Wow. That's the day of God. A new heaven and a new earth, brothers and sisters. We're on to dwells righteousness. We just thank God again as we will close out this message with Brother Chris in the memory of when we came down for a visit here a few years ago. What a blessing. Brother Chris has always been to us, and even his memory, blessed is the memory of the just. Because of that scripture, I always remind him, I say, hey, Brother Chris, I point my finger to the sky, just like you see there. I said, this is the scripture of the coming of Jesus Christ that God gave you many years ago, and he's hid that word in his heart, and Brother Chris will be in the first resurrection. There's no doubt about it. We just want to bless you, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. May his word continually be hid in your heart, and may his fear be in your heart also, as it said in Jeremiah. I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. I thank God for that scripture when he gave that to me years ago, and has actually manifested that scripture within my heart, because it's the fear of God's going to keep us in this hour. Just like Solomon said, this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And he's God, Almighty God's going to bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So may God bless you this day, brothers and sisters, and continue to keep you in his fear through the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.